A 2012 study commissioned by the Gina Davis Institute on Gender in Media and completed by researchers at the University of Southern California examined gender roles in media popular with youth. The authors concluded that female characters in film, television, and children's programming are still sidelined, stereotyped, and sexualized in popular entertainment content. Unfortunately, the same can probably be said about the portrayal of women in other types of media, from advertising to publishing, even journalism. But an effort is underway to change those portrayals, and our next guests are at the forefront of that effort. Joining me now are Jessica Bennett. She's a contributing editor at Lean In and curator of the Lean In collection on Getty Images. Kara Eschbach is editor-in-chief and publisher of Verily Magazine. And Dana, Dana Seguin is Senior Director of Marketing for the Airy Line and American Eagles Outfitters. Thank you all for coming in and joining us here at Full Frame. Thanks for having, Thanks us. For having us. Let me lean in and ask you the first question. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me about Lean In. So Lean In is the organization founded by Sheryl Sandberg, who's the COO of Facebook. And she wrote a book called Lean In, um, the idea of which is to empower all women to achieve their ambitions. It's a New York Times bestseller. It went completely viral. And she started a foundation along with it. I'm a journalist, I've written about women's issues for years, and so I joined the organization to work on special projects, one of which is this project about women in media. And Lean In then, it grows and it becomes what? I think Lean In becomes a movement in yeah. a lot of ways. Yeah. You know, there's thousands and thousands of women who've joined the community. Um, they have various programming. We just launched a campaign this week called Ban Bossy around gender and language. And then one of the big programs we're working on is how we can change the portrayal of women in media. So advertising, like you mentioned, publishing and imagery. Carol, let me ask you, you know, you, you just heard that uh, study, the Gina Davis Institute. Uh, I, I didn't see any of the three of you go, oh, like that. Uh, this doesn't <laughs> shock you, does it, this piece of information? Absolutely not. I mean, part of why we started Verily was that I think we can see the way that women are portrayed and the way, and especially images are shot and you know, kind of what you guys were addressing in, in the Getty collection is that it's so powerful the way that we see ourselves, the way that we see other women being portrayed. And a lot of that has to do with editorial. You know, how often do you see women smiling? Pretty rarely. How often do we see them being executives and being, you know, sort of good moms and happy? Um, I think that, that the way that we're seeing women generally is not the way that we want to see ourselves, but we see that these images over and over and over again. And even though we say that we know that it's bad for us, still we're internalizing it and self-sexualizing all the time. So I think that it's incredibly powerful to actually not just say that there needs to be a change, but to do something that is actually changing what we see. Okay, so let's talk about that change and I'll move on to you, Dana. Mm -hmm. What are the changes that you're helping to eventuate? I mean, what are some of the things that are going on? Yeah, in the Airy brand, the biggest change that we've taken is we've taken a stance against retouching. So we no longer are retouching our girls and our images. We are an intimates brand, so we shoot bras and undies on our girls, and we are not, no longer retouching any of the images that we're using as a, as a brand. We're taking a stance against it. And Carrie, you're, you're kind of taking that same stance too, no photoshopping? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for us, it was a natural outgrowth of our entire brand is about authenticity. And so we were kind of getting images back from photographers that had clearly been retouched, and we were saying, how can we stand up here and say that we want to have more authentic portrayal of women in all of the kind of content that we produce? And then we're changing the way that these women look when we produce a photograph. So we you know, just had to take a stand, and we don't change the face or body structure of any of our models. We don't take out wrinkles or freckles or, or moles. Um, because I think that it's really important to actually see what other women look like. Because when you see that someone is really beautiful, and I think um, Dove did a study several years ago that said 4% of women self-identify as being beautiful, which is ridiculous. I think you look on the street and you're like, these are so many beautiful women walking around and nobody thinks that they are because we're always seeing these retouched images that make it look like, well, she doesn't have bags under her eyes. Right. She doesn't have any freckles. Maybe I need to start covering that up. Uh, but this is just the way that women look, and that is beautiful. And so maybe I am too. Let me let me ask the, the three of you, because you're all really young. Um, you're pounded. Thanks, yeah. you're, <laughs> I got some points here. Uh, you're pounded as as a young girl growing up with this imagery and all that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But then uh, the flip side of that, as you age, you're pounded with the photoshopping. And I mean, and really, you yeah, see yeah. a lot of women. I've met a lot of women 
who almost want to Photoshop their lives. Let's get an injection here and there and all of that. They've, and so they, this concept of beauty has just been so skewed all the way through the entire arc of your lifetime. I mean, is that a correct way I, to I look mean, at it? I mean, I grew up reading women's magazines. I would compare myself against the images that I would see. They were all nipped, tucked, photoshopped, airbrushed to perfection. And, you know, the average girl sees 500 advertisements a day. So, you know, she's on the subway going to school. She sees a billboard on her television, on media, on social media. And what are all of these images telling her about how she's supposed to look and what she can be in the world. So I think what we need to do is change that image. And I think that on some level, what we're seeing with the, the sprouting up of all of these sort of anti-traditional uh, body image programs is that there's a kind of perfection fatigue. We are suffering from perfection fatigue. We've grown up surrounded by this Hollywood ideal of perfection and airbrushed beauty. And I think that on a lot of levels, women and young women in particular are saying they're sick of it. And so there's this real drive for authentic images, to see images of women who have agency, to see women leading, mm -hmm. and to see wrinkles, gray hair, flaws, blemishes. These are the things that all real people have. Yeah, all yeah. these hairs that I've lost, all the wrinkles, I've, I've earned those. Exactly, My but kids it's are exactly. Those yeah. because you're a man. <laughs> See, that's it's the regal other thing. when it, you're a man. It is. <laughs> there's that. There is that double there's standard. There's absolutely right? double standard. Yeah. You know. So, like, but, but let me take that a step further, and I want all three of you to chime in on this. I mean, what you're saying makes perfect sense to me, and yet. You have to go, I mean, don't you have to go to guys like me and say, hey, we've got to change the structure. I mean, isn't that, that's the leadership out there. So how yeah. do you change all of that? And I'll start with you. Yeah, we had to do the same thing. We had to go to our CEO and all of our leaders and really think about it being a big change. Even simple things like what a typical sample size is. We had to work with our vendors to rethink the process. So it was, it's, it, honestly, luckily for me, our CEO was very supportive from day one, and our entire team has been. But you have to be courageous, and you have to do it, because it was, um, it was a definite change, and it's a big change to um, talk a lot of people into. Yeah, I, say, I mean, for us, when we, when we shoot our, our more editorial spreads, we've taken a stand where we try to use, you know, quote-unquote, plus-size models, which in the industry can be anybody from a size six on up, which most people kind of laugh that that mm -hmm. would be considered plus. But that means that you now have to find a photographer who actually wants to shoot them. Yep. You have to find the clothing that has been done in a sample size mm -hmm. if you're going to have a PR sample sent. Um, and so a lot of times you can't get a sample or it literally doesn't fit the girl and you're like trying to hook it in the back to make sure it stays on her. Um, or you're, then you've got to find like all of these other things that go along with it. It's not just, oh, we you know, want to hire somebody who is a plus size model. So I think it takes a lot of participation throughout the industry to say, yeah, this is really important and we're going to really start changing all of these inputs to be better and actually say that we're not just going to tell girls that they should feel healthy and they should feel good about themselves. We're going to actually show them that this is something that's really good. Mm -hmm. And it's also about numbers. You know, creative directors are only 3% women. And mm -hmm. so these are the people making the decisions about what you're going to see in everyday advertisements. So just like you look at the statistics around women in business, they're pretty similar for women in the creative fields. So part of what we're doing with Lean In and Getty is we're putting out this collection of empowered images images of mm -hmm. women and more importantly we're getting them into the hands of art directors and creative directors because we can talk about this till the cows come home but unless you change the images no real change is going to happen. We mm -hmm. have to change labels too. I mean uh, I could go into a room and oh he's persuasive. You go in and you're a little pushy. You know th Bossy, there's, right. yeah, yeah. Bossy, that's, that's <laughs> another part of it too. I yes. mean, isn't that the other thing that women have to overcome that Guys like me. I mean, I should just sit here and beat up on myself <laughs> the whole time. But I mean, you know what I'm saying. It's, it's you know, in the 1970s, there was real overt sexism. There was overt discrimination. It was easy to call out. It's much more subtle these days. It's about the imagery that you're surrounded by. It's about being called aggressive in the workplace and that having a negative impact on you. Absolutely. And I mean, I used to, I worked in finance. I was on Wall Street for three years. And you know, I think that the subtle ways in which people interact with each other there, even where you know, if you're a feminine woman, maybe people react to you differently. And as you were saying with a guy who, if he's very, uh, stands up for himself and going after a deal, they call him aggressive and it's a good thing. And then th when they say the same thing about a woman, it's like, well, I mean, she's such a nightmare to work with. Like, she's Be doing work. her job well. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and the reality is that it requires those assertive 
quote unquote bossy qualities to actually get ahead. Those are actually leadership qualities. Mm -hmm. What about the response? Yeah. So give me feedback, all three of you. What are you seeing? I mean, is it rejoicing? I yeah. mean, finally. In Aerie, that's what we've seen. We've seen customers writing in. We've seen parents writing in. We've seen dads writing in. And we've seen a lot of girls talking about, this is what I've wanted. This makes me feel like I am connected with this brand, but also that I can relate to these girls. And, you know, in social media is the place we've seen it the most. And I think social media has given young women a new outlet yeah. to express this. Yeah. So, you know, I saw all over Twitter when, when Ari launched this. And mm -hmm. with our stock image collection, people started sending in their own images of themselves looking empowered, and they would hashtag it, not your stock woman. And women are the majority of social media users. So it's sort of given them this outlet to talk back, to talk back to the mm -hmm. culture and perhaps reject a lot of what is being put out there. You can probably talk, though, from, a, from an ARC standpoint, because you've covered uh, women's issues for a long time. I mean, what, was there a turning point or is there a turning point or are we witnessing the turning point? I think we're definitely seeing something in the air. You know, I haven't seen feminism, the F word, talked about this much in the media since I've been covering it, and that's been about 10 years. So, you know, we're talking about these things from the numbers at the top, from women in business, to the labels that we call women, like you mentioned, to imagery. It's really spanning all of these regions, and I think that media attention is so important to actually changing the trajectory of women. Let me, I, I want to, because we're almost out of time, but I do want to talk about this study, and I'm sure you're probably familiar with the Knox College uh, focused on how young, <laughs> all three of you are nodding <laughs> your head, uh, young girls objectify themselves. Sixty girls aged six to nine were shown one doll wearing revealing sexy clothing, another doll with trendy but more modest loose-fitting clothing, and then they, they told the girls, you know, which one's better, and predominantly, oh, I want to be the sexy girl. Um, if that Knox College study is done years from now, after the three of you are out there putting your imprint on media, how do you think it might go then? Dana, I'll start with you. Okay. Well, I hope that it changes, but I think the biggest thing is that, you know, the, the girls out there have to embrace this and have to ask for more of it. And, I mean, we've seen that in Aerie. That's what we've seen. We've seen our girl applaud it, and we've seen them become our brand ambassadors and our advocates and I think that's what we need to continue we need those advocates to you know to then raise the next generation and I hope that that's what happens and I hope then it forces other retailers other creative people other people in general just to do the same thing and to think about those girls because that's exactly who we thought about when we were working on this so and Kara do the study years from now what do you how do you want it to turn out yeah I think I think it will change because the other interesting piece of that study is actually the girls who chose the more modest one. They said were ones where their parents took media to be a time to talk to them about mm -hmm. this is actually not good. These girls are being sexualized. That's not the way that you want to be. And so I think the fact that we're having this cultural moment and talking about it so much, you know, I hope that that means that our children and our friends' children and the ne next generation will start to talk to their kids about it and say, hey, you know, you want to be the CEO, you want to be, you know, a really empowered mother, you want to be all these things, and take the opportunity to have the conversations, because those are the girls who actually choose it, they're not just, you know, taking it in for what it is, and actually having those conversations is what makes the difference. You get the final word, Jessica. You know, Gina Davis often says, you can't be what you can't see. This is about providing alternatives. We need to see images of women in power. It's sexy to be a CEO. You don't need to be wearing revealing clothing. So I think that the more images we show men and women, the more we realize that these are the things to aspire to and to inspire us. All right. The three of you have just been fantastic. Good luck with your efforts. It's great meeting all of you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Us.